Hi, I'm Orlando Martos, Equipment Manager at the Creative Media Institute and New Mexico State University. Today, I'm going to be showing you the basics, overview, and setup of the Tascam DR60D Mark II mixer. Like every kit that you get here from CMI, it's going to have an inventory tag that clearly labels everything that should be included in this pack. Here we have our DR60D sound mixer, our strut protection bag, shoulder strap, a 3.5 millimeter cable, and a mini USB cable. Here we have the DR60D Mark II mixer. We have our protection bag and shoulder strap equipped to it. This makes it really easy to hold and operate the mixer on set. In the front pouch, we have our 3.5 millimeter cable, which allows us to connect to the input jack of an, a DSLR camera, and our mini USB cable for file transfer purposes or for powering the unit from an external USB battery. Okay, so first things first, we need to put batteries into our field mixer. To do so, the very back panel of the mixer opens up, allowing you to place four AA batteries. Now you can use either rechargeable or alkaline batteries on this mixer. You just have to make sure that you enable which specific kind you're using in the menus. And we'll show you how to do that a little later on. Whenever you're placing your batteries, you'll want to put them on top of this little ribbon right here. And the ribbon helps you to pop the batteries out nice and easy when you're done with your shoot. With your batteries in place, we can replace the back panel and you're ready to go. To power on your device, you're gonna press and hold the button right here on the side. After a couple seconds, you'll see the screen light up and the boot up screen will follow. So now I'm gonna give you an overview of all of the ports and buttons on the mixer itself. Starting with the left side, we have our microphone inputs. Now these will allow you to plug in either two full-size XLR microphones or two quarter-inch microphone cables. If you have a DSLR stereo mic, you can plug it into channels three and four right here. If you're using a DSLR and want to use the microphone from your camera, you can run from the headphone out port of your DSLR into the camera in port right here. You can then run a down mix of all of your microphones to your DSLR camera with the camera out port right here. Now this is a low signal. If you want a high signal, you can use the one located on the other side of the unit. And you can control the gain with this dial located on the side. This is where you'll plug in a remote. Now we don't have any remotes for these mixers, so you don't really need to worry too much about that. Located on the right side of the mixer is our power button, which we've already gone over. The hold switch, which engaged allows you to not accidentally power off your unit by pressing the power button. We have a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that you can use basic headphones on and adjust the volume of it right here. And right below the headphone jack is our camera out high, which sends a boosted signal to our camera. Also located on the right side, underneath this panel is our SD card slot. Now this recorder uses standard SD cards. Just make sure that they are at least class 10 as anything slower than class 10 may not be fast enough to record the data that you want. Uh, located underneath is a USB port which you can use to actually power the unit with an external USB battery. Located on the front of your device is our channel switches for channels one and two that allows you to switch them from either line, mic, or mic plus phantom. Now what that means is you'll use line if you're running a boosted signal, say off of a uh, mixer or a uh, preamp. You have mic, which means that you're using a normal powered mic. Mic plus phantom for when you're using like say a shotgun mic or a boom mic that you need to be powered through the unit. It sends a 48 volt signal through your XLR cable to power your mic. In the bottom right corner of the unit on the front is our playback controls. This allows you to play back the last clip that you recorded or skip around to a different clip. It also allows you to uh, enter record pause mode and to stop recording. Here we have our main dial. You use this to navigate all of the menus and sub menus of the mixer. 
Pushing it in will select whatever you have highlighted in that menu. The mixer menu allows us to change which of our microphone channels are going to which channels on the recorder. This also allows us to pan from left to right on those individual channels. The mixer menu allows you to change how each of your microphone inputs are distributed amongst your headphones, whether they're the left or the right or both. The monitor select allows you to change which channels are being monitored through your headphones, whether it be channel one, channel two, or say a mix. Now this is dependent on the type of channels that you are recording in your mixer. The quick menu allows you to bring up quick access features dependent on whatever recording mode that you're recording in. Located on the top of your recorder is a small screw that you can use to actually mount a DSLR camera on top of your mixer and then mount the mixer from the bottom onto your tripod. I wouldn't suggest using a camera over about five pounds on this, however. So now we're gonna go over a quick overview of what the home screen or heads up display actually represents. We have the monitoring mode, which lets you know which channel that you are currently monitoring. Uh, we have our playback indicator setting, which lets us know whether we're doing repeat, continuous, or play all, or just to play back a single clip. The playback area tells us which folder that we are recording into. We have our current playback file number. We have our elapsed time, our battery indicator, our recorder operation status, we have our level meter, which has the level of our input and our playback meter. We have our track status display, which lets us know what recording mode we are in. We have our playback position display, our current file name, our remaining time, level align status, our playback EQ status, our peak value in decibels, and what that does is shows us our highest value on that monitored track. Now that we've gone over what the basic buttons and stuff do, it's time to show you how to do a quick setup to get you ready to roll on set. First thing you wanna do is make sure that your date and time are correct. To do that, in our menu, we wanna go down to other, and then date and time. Make sure that that is set to your current date and time. It'll make it a lot easier for you later to organize your files. Also in our menu is our record settings. This is absolutely important that you check this every time before you start recording. We want our record format to be 24-bit wave, our sample rate to be 48K, and our file size to be 2G. In our record mode settings, you can change the different modes that the mixer is recording in whether that's stereo, one channel, two channel, or three and four channels. For the most part, you will be using this in stereo mode with one or two channels. Make sure that MS mode is turned off. In our menu, if you go down to others and click system, we can adjust our phantom power voltage. Make sure that that is set to 48 volts. Most of the mics that you'll be using in all of your classes will require a 48 volt signal in order to operate. Here you can change your backlight duration as well as the battery type. Now, since we are using rechargeable batteries, we wanna make sure that we change them to the NIMH. From the main menu, if you click others, then information, it will display what all of our custom settings are set to. If say we're using multiple microphones, we can adjust what each of those input settings are set to. In our main menu, go to input settings, and the first one will show our channel one microphone. We can change the gain to either mid, high, or low. We can set a limiter or a low cut filter. And if we scroll down, we can adjust our other channels as well. From our main menu, if we go down to others, then to file name, we can adjust what our individual files will be saved as. We can either have it say Word or date. Word can be useful if you're trying to label your takes off of a slate to sync it with a camera later. Although this does take time to go in and individually label each track. 
So what you may want to do is just go off of the date. With all of your settings ready to go, you are now ready to start recording. For the sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna plug in a small shotgun mic into our channel one of our mixer. Since we're only gonna be using one microphone, we gotta make sure that in our menu and record mode, we set it to mono mode. If everything is set up properly, we should see levels across the front of our mixer. Since I have my microphone plugged into channel one, using the channel one dial on the front, I can adjust our gain either by raising it or lowering it. If say for instance, we turn it all the way up and we're still not getting good levels, then we'll have to change our input settings in the main menu and turn the gain up to high. Now that we're ready to record, pressing the record button once will enable recording or put the mixer into what's called record pause mode. The flashing red light indicates that we are ready to record. Pushing the record button a second time will start the recording. If done correctly, you should see our Titan code starting to raise, indicating that we are recording a file. If we wanted to just pause the recording for a second, we can hit the record button again, taking us back to record pause mode. If I were then to hit the record button one more time, it would continue recording where that track just left off. If I wanted to cut the recording and start a new track, all I have to do is press stop. This will automatically advance the file name to the next track. So now you have successfully completed recording your first take. Now this is just a basic overview of everything and there's a lot more in depth that I could get into the various features and whatnot. But what this video is designed to do is to just really get you going for the bare minimum of recording purposes. Next, we're gonna walk you through some troubleshooting of common issues that you may encounter on set. Firstly, say you can't power on your device. That's probably because your batteries are not charged you have the hold button enabled, or it could be that your batteries are not installed the right way with your positives matched to the positive ports and the negative matched to the negative port. If the field mixing unit turns off automatically, that could be because you've lost voltage of your batteries or that the automatic power saving function is enabled. You can disable that within your system menus. If your SD card is not working properly, Chances are it's because it's a too low of a class or that you inserted it improperly. Now there's only one way that this card should fit inside of the recorder, so make sure that it goes in nice and easy and clicks into place. So say you have everything plugged in and you're not getting any monitoring volume in your headphones. Chances are you have your headphones set improperly with the volume set too low on them or it could be that your monitor select does not reflect which channel that you are monitoring. If you're getting a recording error, that could be a number of things. For example, it could be that your SD card is full. It could be that the number of takes has exceeded the number allowable by the device. Or it could be that you actually are recording, but that the input settings of your device are set too low and you're not picking up any signal. Remember that when you turn the volume up on your headphones, that you are not actually turning up the gain of your input. For instance, while it may sound loud enough in your headphones, always check your levels to make sure that you're recording decent levels. If not, you'll have to turn up the input volume. Let's say that you're recording an actor speaking and it sounds a little unnatural. You wanna to check to make sure under your quick menu that your level align is set to off. You can then go through and change your play EQ to either add more treble or bass or mid-range to your source. Now we've just gone over the basics of the Tascam DR60D field mixer. Now there's a whole lot more that I didn't cover and a whole lot more that this device can do that we barely touched upon. Again, this video was designed just to help you get things going on set. If you have any questions, you can always ask us here in the equipment room or consult the field manual, which we actually have several copies of that you can check out with you for your projects. Again, 
I'm Orlando Marthos, and we'll see you for the next training video.